Now, lots of people see, say that they've seen UFOs or had encounters with aliens, but it's still rather unclear about what it is they want or even why they're visiting our world. But Phil Hill thinks he knows. Phil, or UFO Phil, as he's more commonly called, has had quite a bit of contact with extraterrestrial visitors, and he's on the line. Good afternoon, Phil. Well, good afternoon. Is this Sean? It is Sean, yes. Uh, how Hi, are you? thanks. I'm doing good. Thanks for talking to me. Thanks for, thanks for talking to us. Uh, if we could talk a little bit about your background, Phil, when did you first have contact with extraterrestrials? Oh, many years ago, uh, Sean, when I was about two years old, they began abducting me. Well, they, they first appeared to me late at night uh, while I was in a sort of a half-sleep state. So it was a bit strange at first, and I didn't know if I was dreaming at the very beginning. Mm. But then they began ab- abducting me and taking me to their planet, and I knew it was real. Right. And, and, and uh, was it always when you were in bed, kind of dozing off to sleep, that they abducted you and took you to your planet, or did it ever happen during the day? Uh, well, usually it's at night. They just prefer because they are able to bring their ships closer to Earth when it's dark, of course, and they are able to hide a little bit better. They don't They okay. don't want everybody seeing them, just those of us that they have chosen to contact at this point. Right, okay. Of course, when it was dark, when you were asleep, it was the middle of the day in other parts of the world. I've heard that that's true. Uh, so what was the purpose of, of abducting you and bringing you to their planet? Well, can you keep a secret? Uh, certainly. Okay, well, what they have explained to me is that ultimately they do wish to reveal themselves to the entire planet. That At that time, they were not ready to do it yet, and it's, it's approaching that time where they will want to reveal themselves. And when I say reveal themselves, I don't mean take off clothing. I just mean show themselves to be alien beings. And they have had to select people on Earth that they were in tune with and that were in tune with them uh, to sort of uh, prepare the earth for their coming. Right, okay. So are you kind of a spokesperson uh, for these aliens? Yes, I am. Uh, and how many other spokespeople are there, do you know? Well, I've heard that there are six. These are the, the I do not know them. We're we're sort of, we're kept separate and we're, we um, eventually we'll probably have a lunch together and, and a convention of sorts and we, mm. we will be able to talk about our experiences. But at this point, we don't really interact with each other, but I've heard there are six. Right, okay. So, uh, are the other five kind of staying a bit quiet about it? Because I haven't heard you're the only one I've heard of. I think that I have, for some reason, and it, perhaps it's because I perform music and that sort of thing, that I have had more attention drawn to me. And so I believe the aliens picked several people knowing full well that maybe only one or two of us would actually be able to get our message out. And at this point, it seems to be me. Mm. Why, why did they choose you, do you think, Phil? I think because very early on I was receptive to when they would speak to me. They have a- a- attempted to show themselves to others and other people just don't listen or don't see or they get so frightened that they realize the aliens will then realize we better stop talking to this person or they're going to have a heart attack mm. and then they will be no good to us. Okay. That's that. Uh, that's uh, and of course we don't know. They may have given people heart attacks. This is true. People have, at very young ages, people have heart attacks. And you think, I think to myself, well, maybe the aliens snuck up on them too quickly. Mm. Now, you have, as you say, since you were a baby, virtually, since you were two years of age, you have been visiting their planet. What's their planet like and where is it? Well, they they usually blindfold me or in the case of, uh, now, let me make it clear. There are good aliens and there are bad aliens. Oh, and the abduction, yeah, I know. And the abduction experience is different with different ones. But um, they they usually, they don't want us to know exactly where they are located. And so they will blindfold me. And uh, and the trip is not does not take very long. So, I mean, it's sort of like going down to the corner shop. It's very quick. Right, but, yes. Um, I think they travel very fast is why it's it that way. One would assume so, yes. Uh, yeah. And so what's the, so are you wearing the blindfold the whole time? Not right now. I know, yes, but I mean when you any time you you know when you go off with the aliens you have to wear the uh, uh you have to wear the blindfold all the time. Oh, no, usually just when we're traveling and in, when we get to their planet, I they will allow me to to I basically become a tourist, a tourist of sorts and I'm able to see things and experience things and uh, enjoy the local cuisine, which is quite delicious. Right. So, I mean, is it like our planet? Do they have Starbucks? Do they, you know, what's it like? Do they have streets? And what do they look like? 
Yeah, it's very, very similar, except everything is blue. That's really the only difference. I mean, everything is blue. Everything you can see is blue. Like, our sky is blue, our water is blue. That's kind of where it ends, maybe a few flowers. But there, the beings are blue, the buildings are blue, the clothing is blue, everything. Right. Is there a reason for that? I just think that's the way they're made, and I don't judge. Okay. All right. I mean, do they wear clothes? I mean, do they oh, wear oh, blue clothes? Yes, they do. Either that or very fashionable skin, but I'm pretty sure it's clothing. Right, okay. Uh, and so, uh, what is that? Now, they, they they did at some point implant a chip in your brain, or is it in your brain, or do you know? Yeah, it's in there. It's in, I, there's, I'm, three, there's three chips, I'm sorry. Yes, there's three. three. And what is the function of the three chips? Uh, can you keep a secret? Yeah. Yeah, the, uh, the first chip they gave me, was a musical chip, and that gave me basically the ability to play several musical instruments and to write musical compositions without much trouble, without a lot of people have to go to school for years and years and years, and then they become composers or whatever. Mm. Um, but for me, they put this chip in my brain. Right. And there is also a, a telepathy chip, which allows them to communicate with me from even if they're very far away. I can hear them in my mind. They're talking to me right now. OK. Sometimes it's distracting. But I'm trying to have a conversation with you and you've got aliens talking in this ear and that, it's a little distracting. That would be. Uh, yeah. I, well, um, I'm sorry. The third chip would be it's uh, sort of like the equivalent of uh, a translator chip in a way because they speak different languages. And with this chip, I can then understand it instantly oh. with, with hardly any delay. And look, can I ask a question really quick? Sure. When I speak to you, do I have an American voice and a, an American accent? Yes. Okay, because I was curious. I didn't know if oh, if I oh, was talking to you and you were in Ireland, if something would convert my voice so that you would understand me in uh, more of an Irish, uh, an uh, Ireland uh, dialect. I didn't know if you had that. Uh, no. Uh, no, we don't, we don't, we don't, obviously this is advanced technology that's implanted into your brain, which hasn't been invented yet on, on, on this particular world. Uh, Phil, I, I think the most important question that we need to get to is, what's the deal with these aliens? What do they want? Well, the aliens, ultimately, and very, very soon, um, and this is why I'm building a pyramid, you, you may have heard of this on mm -hmm. Pike's Peak for them, that they can then land on top of this pyramid without actually having to land on our soil. They were able to still maintain a little bit of distance for safety purposes, land on top of the giant pyramid, and at that point, they will begin to make contact with us. Right. They, want, they just want peace. The good aliens, you know, I said there's bad aliens too, and yeah. they are out there. In fact, there were some uh, just uh, one state away, they were sighted uh, a couple weeks ago, and they are the ones with the red ships. So I told you the good aliens are blue, the bad aliens are red. Okay, right. You red. Yeah, if you see a red UFO hovering around, that's not one you want to be messing with. All right, and what do the red aliens want? Oh, well, they just want to destroy the planet. Oh. They've been trying to do this, and if it wasn't for Zaxxon, he's the leader of the good aliens. Okay. If it wasn't for Zaxxon, yeah, he has been helping to keep them at bay with his technology, and they're sort of afraid of him. He's very powerful, mm. and he has very nice skin, if you ever saw him. I have a picture of him here, but... um. And everyone who's seen it has said it's a sketch because he won't allow himself to be photographed. But everyone who has seen it has said it's a very good likeness. Zaxxon, if you could see his eyes, you would see he, he is a very good being. Right. OK. Uh, I, I'm glad to hear that. And the, and the red aliens, the baddie aliens, they just want to destroy the planet just for fun. Do they want to eat us? Or is there you know, some sort of natural resource they want to get their hands on? Who knows why they do the things they do sometimes? You would know, Zaxxon you not know? Well, Zaxxon would know it's, you know, but he says it's too complicated, complicated for me to understand. Okay. And if you waste a lot of time trying to get into the psychology of the bad aliens, I don't know what you gain. I mean, you should really just be worried about protecting the planet. Indeed. You know, I mean, there's, I, I'm sure there's different philosophies on that. And some people say, well, they're bad aliens. They're aliens, too, and we should try and attempt to understand them and maybe we can change them. But I just don't support that theory. The, uh, the, now, the, the pyramid that you want to build, and, and, and uh, as it's based on the ancient pyramids, and, and your contention is it's a kind of an, uh, it, it, what it, uh, those pyramids actually were, were kind of giant power stations. Uh, how is that work progressing in getting this pyramid built? Well, I haven't actually began construction. I've been dealing with uh, the government uh, bureaucracy here mm. who have been um, not all that receptive for some reason. They, they don't seem to want a giant pyramid on top of Pike's Peak, which... 
Um, by the way, they consider that to be America's Mountain, one of our very patriotic songs, America the Beautiful, mentions the mountain. Um, and so, uh, but I think the mountain would be much more beautiful with a giant pyramid. And I don't know if you've seen the photo that I have created of what it would look like. But here you have this mountain that at this point sort of has a flat top, and they're just using it for a, a car park right now, which oh, that's fine and good. But, I mean, you know, you can put a car park anywhere, but there's only so many places that the pyramid would be as aesthetically pleasing as it is, as it will be, on top of Pikes Peak. Indeed. What state is Pikes Peak in, by the way? It's in Colorado. It's in Colorado, of course. Yeah, uh, and, uh, and, and is that, in, is that where you live, or do you, do you keep a certain veil over your precise location? Well, I do. Uh, I do live in Colorado, and I'm. I'm. I can see Pikes Peak right now through my window, and okay. so I'm very close to it. Yeah, but I don't give my exact address out because uh, people. I, I'm just afraid that people will come and do things to me. I've had a little bit of negative response mostly from the government, and I am worried. I think they may even be tapping my phone line and listening into this call, and so I have to be very careful. Right, okay. Now, to, to give, and I, I imagine this is probably going to be a first uh, on Irish radio, maybe in, uh, probably not on radio around the world, but certainly on Irish radio. As you did mention, Phil, you do you do have this one of these three chips implanted into your, uh, into your brain, which has helped your musical ability, uh, and so that you've kind of developed a bit of a career as a musician, and, and, and to sign off for us, Phil, we would really appreciate if you could play us something or sing us something, an example just to show how these aliens have managed to uh, expand your natural talents. Oh, uh, sure, I can I can, you want me to just sing it a cappella right here for you now? Go for it, Phil, whatever you want. Okay, here we go. Now this is a this is based on a true story. Okay. okay. One night I was walking on the mountain all alone but then I heard a sound and a meteor fell on my head and I really thought I was dead. Bad aliens really stink. Like the mildew in your kitchen sink. Bad aliens really smell. Like the bottom of a wishing well. In hell. A bad smell. And that's it in a nutshell. Very abridged version of aliens uh, really stink. Phil, uh, um, that was excellent. Uh, have you ever heard of Jedward? Jedward. No. An I, alien? No. Well, I'm not sure now. Uh, I, I, when we're finished this interview, Phil, and it is pretty much finished now, uh, Google Jedward. Uh, have a look okay. at them. They're twins. I'm starting to have my suspicions. They seem like nice guys to me, but having heard you, it could be very dodgy. Phil, thanks a million uh, for talking to us today. Uh, we wish you the very best of luck with getting your um, uh, your, your pyramid uh, built there. Uh, we're going to take a break after this. Some good things to do tonight. Moncrief on News Talk 106 to 108.